Hi doll faces, these are my Ostara contemplations and to be brutally frank with you, if you live in the UK, it doesn't really feel like the coming of spring. <laughs> that is a fact. It's pretty nippy out, quite grey, um, icy I would say, I think would be fair to say. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's not really feeling seasonally like Ostara, but Ostara it is and I have a few things to say on that. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the egg symbol with regard to Ostara. Now obviously a lot of pagans will already know, be fully aware of where the word Ostara comes from and that it's the old high German way of saying um, Istra or Ostra, however you want to pronounce it, the goddess of fertility, the Germanic goddess of fertility and how that kind of wove its way into becoming a Christian festival. The symbol of the egg, I feel, is a really powerful one because it's all about something that's about to hatch into life and it's about the seed of something that's going to grow into something that we're not yet aware of and we don't kind of know how it's going to finish up but we know that it's coming into being, that it's gestating and that it's about to kind of like crack open and that's why Easter eggs are such a fitting symbol, I think, for this time of year and they're an age-old symbol. Obviously they weren't always made by like Cadbury's and stuff, but um, yeah, an age old symbol from time immemorial and I think that's a really powerful symbol and it makes me think a lot about new life in my own existence and with what I'm doing. It makes me think about what's fresh and what's new and what's coming and about the seeds that I've planted and how I can't wait to explore and address how they're going to come into being and how kind of things might surprise me and things might not go exactly the way I wanted them to, but I'm kind of, I feel ready for that. Ostara makes me feel very rejuvenated. It makes me feel that there is a fresh energy inside of me, that I'm feeling ready to take things on. And I think also, I talked about this in my Imult Contemplations video, how I feel that um, Samhain and Yule are the time when we kind of go within and we make preparation um, in order to later kind of assist our manifestation, if you like. So I feel that they're the very much the inner kind of festivals. And I feel that with Imult to an extent as well. I think that Ostara is more of that coming out. It's that coming out of energy, that coming out of riveting joy and um, exciting kind of expectation of, of what's going to happen in the high energy season, if you like, of summer. So I like that about Ostara. And it's not a festival that I've always been overtly concerned with the way I always have been with Samhain because I am naturally more of a winter kind of girl and a lot of the stuff that I address in my own spiritual pathway pertains more to the colder months anyway and pertains more to gestation and kind of like deep inner recesses so I've not always bonded well with spring and summer as seasons and that's kind of like a bit weird to admit because most people are the other way around but yeah with me summer when I was a teenager certainly it wasn't a very pleasant time for me so spring was basically just that knock on the door from summer saying hey I'm coming to make everything hot and unpleasant and sticky for you and <laughs> you're gonna have to wear clothes that you don't feel entirely as comfortable in as, as you you know you can wear in the winter months and stuff so yeah, I kind of, I never really used to feel a strong emotional bond with summer, whereas now I feel I'm much more of a balanced individual and I can see the positives and the beauty inside every season equally, so Ostara is now a really lovely time for me. It's a time to venerate and bond with fertility goddesses, like obviously um, Istra is a big one, um, Freya for me is a big one the Norse goddess of fertility and love and other stuff as well, war and death, she's quite a multifaceted goddess. Um, uh, Demeter is a popular one for a lot of people, the Greek goddess of the harvest, so yeah, it's nice to look at the qualities and the attributes that we see inside ourselves that bring out that kind of fertility goddess energy, that desire to um, strike a new deal with our own existence, to make something come into being, to feel um, creatively or imaginatively pregnant, if you will, with what's to come and what we want to shape our lives into, the way we want to like co-create our reality alongside the universe instead of kind of doing battle with it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I also feel like the Ostara Festival brings with it, for me at least, um, big contemplations about the mixing of masculine and feminine energy. And this is completely regardless of gender. But I basically feel like because the egg is a representation of um, reproduction and birth and that whole process, I feel that it very much speaks to me about the balancing and the harmonising of masculine and feminine energy inside of me. 
And you've heard me talk before in my tarot videos about masculine and feminine energy and how um, these two types of energy don't actually pertain to gender at all. In fact, we should be encouraged as both men and women to have both masculine and feminine energies within us, which we can kind of like pluck out and explore and use um, and help us with whatever we need to address in our lives. So feminine energy would be more receptive, more intuitive, um, more flowing, more to do with feeling feeling and putting that feeling into action, um, more to do with kind of exploring our environment, whereas our masculine energy would be more active, um, it would be more about determination and analytical thought, it would be more about putting rules into our environment and structuring our, structuring our environment. So both kinds of energy are really important and um, when we have one kind of energy that overrides the other or one kind of energy that we can tap into and the other that we feel is very alien to us then that energy that we kind of um, lean towards can become toxic because it's not balanced out by the other energy within us which needs to manifest in order for us to kind of have the toolkit that we need to address certain issues in life and this is very much a yin and yang idea you know that idea of balance and duality that humankind is so fond of and um, we think so much about things like in that way we think in terms of duality in terms of the two sides to each coin so Ostara speaks to me about that uh, a lot I think it's very important sometimes for me to identify with my more feminine energies because I feel the masculine energy is very strong within me and sometimes when I'm dealing with something that's particularly frustrating or overwhelming uh, or high drama I feel like the masculine side of me can sometimes become toxic because it's not balanced out by that more receptive more reflective energy that I need so that's kind of how I break it up in my brain and that's how a lot of people do and that's why talking about masculine and feminine energy has become so popular. So I think Ostara gives me the chance to think about that and it also gives me the chance to just think about how everything is speeding up and everything is coming to life you know there's that very strong energy with Ostara and I feel that that's why a lot of people tap into it so much and a lot of pagans feel that it is such an important festival because it kind of it breeds this sense of momentum, this incredible sense of momentum inside of us where we feel like really, finally, the train is leaving the platform. And this time last year, we were in a completely different place in our lives. The train was leaving from a completely different place. And, you know, we bought a completely different ticket. And now we have a year's worth of work under our belt. And we're finally ready to begin that journey again. That's how it feels. It feels like we're actually moving away from the platform and we are going kind of like joyously and bravely into the unknown. Uh, that we have a certain plan and we want that plan to come into fruition we want to see action we want to take action in our lives and I think that's a beautiful thing about Ostara that feeling of the speeding up and that kind of excitement it's almost like when you are in the line ready to go on a roller coaster and you really want to get out of the line because you're afraid but there's something in you that keeps you in that line thinking no I'm going to get on this roller coaster in fact it reminds me <laughs> of going on stealth at Thorpe Park uh, a few years ago with my friends and I I started to get really freaked out when I got towards the front of this line I mean this is a scary ride it goes from like 0 to 80 in two seconds and it like shoots you right up into the air and then somersaults you round and oh I wanted to get out of that line <laughs> and uh, I almost did get out I almost thought this is too much for me I can't deal with it as we got closer and closer to the ride and my friend John was like grabbing hold of me and saying I'm not gonna let you get out of this line you know you want to get on this ride and I had the time of my life, I couldn't stop talking about it for the rest of the weekend. I was telling everybody, you have to go and go on that ride, it's amazing. And that's kind of how Astara feels for me. I feel like this sense of, um, it's like anticipation, but it's almost to the point where I'm thinking, is this too much? Is this too big? Have I prepared enough? Am I who I, who I think I should be to, to do this? Um, it's kind of a testing time, but it's testing in an exciting way. It feels nurturing. So that's, um, that's a nice thing about Astara. As I said before, preparation is now becoming manifestation, you know, um, the time for figuring it out and the time for structuring it has come to a, to a close and the time to actually begin it has kind of come. So, you know, I think that's, um, it's something that the changing of the seasons makes us feel because I think about, and I know a lot of pagans feel this way, I think about the changes in the seasons as being a macrocosm of the microcosm. And I really feel that way with Ostara and I feel that way with all festivals in paganism in the Wheel of the Year that really um, watching nature and watching the cycles organically change is a lot like watching the changes that are taking place into your in your own life. And the synchronicity there is absolutely undeniable. 
Um, it truly is a macrocosm of the microcosm, as above, so below, you know, it is a reflection, it is a mirror image of what's going on within you, and that's the very motherly thing about following the cycles of the earth, I think. It feels like a very motherly presence. It feels like something that's always there and it's always with you and it's always encouraging you and it's always reminding you that you can do more and that you can be more and that you are beautiful and that you, uh, your existence and your life and the journey that you're taking is significant and it is important and it is of worth. I think that's something that a lot of people can forget and Ostara keeps me coming back to that feeling quite a lot. I think Ostara is a time to take risks. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I feel that it's quite a, um, it's a time of spontaneity and it's a time of testing your limits and testing your boundaries, you know. Um, there's a lot of dipping your toe out of your comfort zone comes around in springtime. And I also think it's a time for accountability. There is so much talk at the beginning of spring about spring cleaning, both inner and outer spring cleaning and decluttering, decluttering your home, decluttering your mind, decluttering your environment, you know, decluttering your relationships, getting everything back down to basics, back down to the foundations, the keystones, what's important, let's get rid of the kitsch, let's get rid of the unnecessary drama, let's get rid of the things we don't use anymore, you know, let's recycle, let's put those things somewhere where they can get more use, where they can fulfil their purpose, and in the process, minimalise our lives and make them less complex and more open to the things that we actually want to manifest. I think decluttering is a really beautiful and useful exercise and there are a few tarot readings I give where decluttering is like a major part of what I talk about. It's actually one of the steps in the reading is to practice decluttering your life, decluttering your home, decluttering your mindset and getting everything straight because there are a lot of things that suck our energy and a lot of things that lay heavy on our minds that we really could do without at this time of year when it is about preparing to really forge forward and really come into our power. So yeah, decluttering, that whole spring clean thing. And it sounds so, it sounds like it's about drudgery and it sounds really boring and it sounds really old school, but actually there's a lot of beautiful and eternal truth to the idea of the benefits of the spring clean. And I think Ostara really gives me that spring clean feeling. It makes me want to declutter. And I feel that I'm doing that in my own way. Um, I have a notebook that's becoming really full lately with lists and plans and schedules and things that I need to get out of the way. If I have a thought in the middle of the day of something that I need to do and I can't do it immediately, I will note it down but I've noticed that over the last month it's becoming a very structured very regimented I'm helping myself I'm giving myself that structure that I need to um, cut away what's no longer working and focus on okay what are the things that I really want to make manifest what are the things that that I want to come into my life and what do I need to focus on in terms of priority and what do I need to give myself in terms of manageable realizable goals so I think Ostara does that well as well. It, it fuels you with that energy that you need to actually um, cut the crap, I guess you could say. Uh, Ostara for me is a lot about cutting the crap and, and taking risks. And in my own life, you know, I am taking things to the next level in a few different ways. I'm, I'm not going to go on about how that's actually coming to being for me. But I feel, you know, that I am taking a few things to the next level. I'm challenging myself. I'm doing a few things that I probably wouldn't have considered doing a few months ago because I would have told myself that I didn't have the time or um, I probably wouldn't have felt as high energy. That Ostara energy has kind of kicked me into touch and made me come out of my own shell a little bit and explore what life is like outside of the outside of the box. And I um, I feel that that's a strong Ostara energy that's actually pouring out of me and I think it's become a really good influence on a few people in my life as well so I like that about it. I think I'm taking some risks but I'm also deciding how to shape my journey and I'm giving myself the encouragement that I need to feel entitled to do that. I think for me, Ostara brings with it that energy of entitlement. I am entitled to create my reality. I am entitled to have a say. I am entitled to find my joy and play with my joy and, and build on that joy. I am entitled to explore. I am entitled to the space I need to do that. It's kind of like, um, it's a free feeling. It's like a, it's like a feeling of being a child at play, you know, just exploring what's around the next corner and knowing that that is okay. And that it's, um, it's not actually as scary as you tell yourself it is to do that. So these are just a few brief thoughts on Ostara and many blessings to you all, whether you're celebrating it or not. And, um, 
yeah thank you for listening and I'll be back shortly with some tea and tarot finally <laughs> blessed be people